Hey guys, this is part three of our Angel Wings build series from Illum Aesthetic. My name is Adam, and today we're gonna talk about the most fun, fun part about the bit, the kit, um, which is the DIY kit portion and the wiring. So let's get right into it. First, DIY kit. What do you get when you order an Illum Aesthetic DIY kit? Um, specifically for this Angel Wings kit, I'm gonna go through everything you get. Um, First off, you're gonna get the panels, obviously. Um, this is the turn signal piece. We're gonna have two. This one's been pre-wired, and we'll show you at a later date, later time in this video. Uh, you're gonna have the circle pieces. Um, it's gonna be a diffused ring with LEDs in the center for the brakes. Um, you can change up how you wanna do it, but again, this is also a diffused piece. Um, everything we make is custom, so if you wanna change this to a heart, change it to a hexagon, whatever you want, simply shoot us an email and we can get it done. No extra cards, no extra cost. And then finally, we have the outer wings portion. This is gonna be either your brake or your DRL. Again, um, it's up to you on how you wanna wire it. In this specific case, we have this wired permanently as the DRL. But again, if you wanna change up how you want this kit to function or not, entirely up to you. We'll go into it a later bit. Um, <clears throat> but um, for this specific kit, that is part of our DRL. Finally, as far as parts, um, inside the kit, you're gonna get a resistor guide. Uh, this is also available online in case you lose it, but this is kind of the gist of how you're gonna wire stuff, what resistors to use, and we'll cover that a little later. Um, so you're gonna get one of these that you can always refer back to. Then of course, you're gonna get your red LEDs. Um, in this case, it's for the circles here. Uh, yellow LEDs for the turn signal. White LED for the reverse. And these are all counted very specific to the kit. Um, obviously the LEDs are very different for every kit, every design. We usually try to give you maybe 10% extra, so 20 to 40 LEDs extra, depending on uh, what kit you get, how many LEDs are included. Just so you can learn and not, uh, not worry about messing up. For whatever reason, if you don't have enough and it's uh, a packing error, let us know. If you blew out too many, um, we always sell these LEDs uh, separately available on our website. And then finally, you're gonna have resistors. Um, we usually include a resistor pack. Um, it's, it's usually 100 to 150 of each LED resistor we usually use. I mean, in this case, you only see three because for this kit, we only use three. Uh, but the GD Angel Wings will actually get a full resistor pack just because across the board, because there's just so many different applications of how you wanna wire things. So we give you a resistor pack. Um, and then finally, LED strip. Uh, this case, don't worry about how much is in here. This is just an example. Uh, for this specific build, we're actually not gonna use, be using LED strip, um, but we usually give LED strip across the board, just in case you wanna cut it up, um, get creative with the uh, illumination. So the reason why you would want LED strip is so you can cut it up and just animate certain portions of the design. Um, so give, using the LED strip over what we're gonna be using um, allows for a little more flexibility. So that's why, um, LED strip is standard with all our kits. However, for this kit, we're actually gonna do something a little different. Um, because this specific build, we're not gonna be doing animations. It's just gonna be standard uh, DRL and brake illumination. So this will actually have dual intensity um, for this specific build. Your typical Angel Wings is actually not gonna have that. So whether or not you want a dimming module is entirely up to you. We're actually gonna have bulbs. Um, these are Subaru specific bulbs. We have a long one and a short one. Um, these are specifically chosen for their brightness. Um, and for this case, we are going to use these bulbs. Uh, these were random bulbs we got off Amazon. If we do decide to have a standardized bulb, we will link it in the description. Not entirely sure yet, this is more for testing. Uh, but yeah, for this build, we'll be using bulbs. So uh, I'll try to talk a little bit about the traditional way of doing it, or we might just do a more traditional diffusion build in a different video, so just let us know. But for this build, I'm just gonna be doing bulbs. So, let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna breeze through the resistor, uh, or resistor guide real quick. Um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, we do have a more specific, actual in-depth wiring video. Um, we, we're probably gonna also update it, so we'll um, link that here, here, whatever, or we'll put it in the description. Um, but if you don't understand any of this, we'll do have another video for this. I'm just trying to breeze through it so it's not boring, you guys. But um, in this specific case, um, if the lights do not have break or dimming. So in this case, we don't actually, we're not gonna use a dimming module with this. Um, the dimming is actually gonna be done through the bulbs themselves. And um, we're actually gonna hardwire 
um, the turn signals and the, the red LED brakes directly to the harness. So we're actually going to use this one, um, which is the 14 volt or the 13.4 volt assumption. So we're actually going to wire to this. So for all future reference, for whenever we do wiring, I'm going to do this, um, just so you know. So let's move on and let's just start wiring. All right, so now we're going to go into the meat of it. Um, so just keep in mind, if you are ever confused with the resistors or why I'm doing certain things, I'll try to explain it. Um, but I'm going to start by preparing or mentally keeping note of what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and start with the turn signal piece. This one's actually the easier one. So again, preface this, you can wire these however you want. Um, this is just the standard way we quote unquote do it. Um, if you want to change the turn signals to just be like 50 50 this way instead of this way um, just shoot us an email we'll give you the correct led count for it. it again this is designed to be very very customizable but for the sake of this video we're going to do it like this so i'm going to draw a silver sharpie line right down the middle this top half is going to be white for my reverse this bottom half is going to be yellow um, this specific light is actually going to be sequential so these modules are sold separately. You purchase them separately. Um, they're not a standard part of the quit kit, but it's a this. And I'm going to wire this for sequential. So my turn signals are need to be separated into quote unquote pixels. Um, I already know, um, I've counted prehand that I want um, basically even groups of four, um, four cross. So I'm going to draw a line that indicates four cross. You see that? So four LEDs, four LEDs, four LEDs, four LEDs, four LEDs. So these are actually gonna be individually wired um, with shared grounds and separate powers um, because that's how this module is wired. Depending on which sequential module you get, you might want sep uh, common power, separated ground. Um, but again, if you're confused, we do have dedicated sequential wiring for this, uh, sequential wiring guides. Um, so since I know that this is even groups of four, like this, Right, I'm going to be using the, I'm going to refer to my wiring sheet and it's going to say groups of four, you're in yellow, 470 ohm. So those are the resistors I'm going to use for my yellow, which is right here, 470 ohm. Um, so now for the whites. Um, again, I'm going to try to do something that's consistent. So I see white groups of four um, is 150 and white groups of three is 470. Um, so for this, I am going to do... Uh, the most obvious one I see is just groups like this. So I'm going to try to do groups of three. And then there will be one group of four at the very end right here. Okay. So now that I have that, um, because the ZLEDs is shared ground, um, I'm going to actually make This wire right here, so you see where this line is connecting the two. I'm going to make that my central ground um, because the LEDs is shared ground uh, separate to power. Um, I'm going to make all of my grounds kind of face this. So that's how I plan this out. And then um, obviously uh, for, the re for the reverse, all of them can share power as well because they're all turning on at once. So all my powers are going to be here. And they're just going to connect. And then all my powers for the, uh, the sequential is going to be here. So that covers the turn signal. And now I'm going to do the, uh, the brakes. So my brakes, I can do groups of five or four, five, four, or three. Um, I'm going to try to keep it um, uniform, as similar as possible. So I'm going to basically do groups of four. Um, circles are a bit of a weird shape, so you do want to plan ahead. So I'm going to draw a group of four here, 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 then group of five here. And again, I'm going to try to see how I'm going to do this to make it as easy as possible. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to make this thick line my shared power. So all of my groups are going to have their power contact here. And then as far as ground goes, um, 
I'm gonna try to have all the grounds meet up here, but I may need a jumper wire um, to connect the grounds. So it's gonna look something like this, um, and I'll explain how this works later. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in LEDs, um, and I'll try to explain that in more detail. All right, so now that we have everything marked up, I'm gonna try to blitz through this um, and just trying to explain while I'm doing it. So let's start with this first. Um, this wires like your most simple tail light does. It's kind of wired like a grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the white LED first. Okay, so with our panels, um, nine times out of 10, they should all press fit in. Um, depending on your curvature and depending on just how lucky you are, some of the LEDs do have tolerancing. So in this case, um, I did get unlucky. Oh, actually, no, it fits. Um, it fits fine. So I got lucky here, or I didn't get. I got. I didn't get unlucky here, and it just fits in. Um, you want to just be a little careful. Um, if you feel like it's a little too hard to push in, um, get a flathead screwdriver or even like a pair of dikes, and just kind of go like this to just open up the um, housing a little bit, and you'll notice that it'll be a little easier to push in. Um, so yeah, just don't push it in. Uh, we do. We have had had incidences where customers have forced it in a little too hard and broke it. Um, if that's the case, don't panic too much. We can sell you replacement boards. Um, it's not too bad. But now just to start. So remember, um, I said that this section would be my positives. This section would be my grounds. Um, if, you, if you are familiar with LEDs and watched our tutorial, you'll know that the long part of the LED pin is, is power and the short part will always be ground. Um, you'll also notice that the LED, the flange, will also have a flat and round side. You can use that to figure out which side is which after you've cut it. But just keep in mind that the flat side isn't necessarily always negative and the round side isn't necessarily always power. You're always gonna base that off the uh, long and short LED pins. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to put in all the LEDs with the long side facing this, right? So it's gonna be long, short, oops, long, short, long, short. Okay, I'm just gonna do that. And what I'm gonna do is for the sake of the next step, I'm actually gonna bend down my long end like this, right? And I'm gonna bend down the short end like this. And what that's gonna do is I have a series of three white LEDs now, and it's going to essentially um, be wired to every other group of three LEDs in series, and they're all gonna be parallel connected to each other. One thing we've noticed um, is a common mistake or common misunderstanding is they, they just string it along the entire way and they end up with like a series of 20 and then wonder why why the LED doesn't light up and it's, it's because it's a series of 20. Um, so it's just gonna be like this. And for the sake of uh, video length, uh, we're going to go ahead and just keep this simple. Um, and um, I'm only going to wire a small section of nine um, just to keep the video short. And actually, I'll do, I'll do a section of 12 just because I've already put this LED in here. So I'll go ahead and do that. These two in. So this one's actually a little tight, so I'm gonna pop this out. Use, use something flat, give me leverage. So this hole's a bit tight. If I need to drill it out, um, I believe 5 16 is the correct drill bit, and I can ream it out, but for this, I'm just gonna use my dikes. Carve it out a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's my reverse section. So now I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the turn signals. I'm gonna get my yellow LED out. This is gonna be a little different. Um, because our LEDs go this way, because we're gonna do groups of four, instead of groups of three horizontal, 
it's like that. Um, I'm actually going to do it like this. My negatives are going to be here, and my positives are going to be here. And this will make a little more sense once it's finished, but I'm going to basically have all my negatives face this way, and all the positives face that way. Um, and this will actually remain the case all the way through the light. So again, this was a little tight. So I'm going to pop this out. And for the sake of saving some time, I'm going to go ahead and just carve all of these out. And pro tip uh, for all of you casual builders at home that don't do this as a job, this is a, one of the great ways to catch up on your Netflix or anything else you've been watching because this is one of those like mindless things you can do while watching TV. So it's one of those top tips where if you ever feel like you're bored and you want to get something done, you know, but still get work done at the same time, you know, just throw on, throw on your favorite TV show. Uh, get some LEDs and just start putting the LEDs in. It's one of those like quick time killers. Um, very, it's, it's therapeutic in some sense. It is very repetitious or, re yeah, is, is that the right word? Repetitive, it's very repetitive, but it's also therapeutic in a sense. Um, so yeah, top tip. It's, it's what uh, we used to do back before we did it as a business. Ooh, caught myself here. So I actually put this LED in the wrong way. So I have all my LEDs in just for these sections. So now what I'm going to do is, like I said before, I'm going to take the first LED pin um, on this side, which is all the positives. I'm going to bend them down. What that does is gives me a long line of positive LED pins um, that will connect and become basically my universal power wire for the white LEDs, like so. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the ground wires and it will give me a long line of universal ground wires that will span the whole length of the LED. Another thing you're going to want to do is make sure that if you bend these, you only bend them once, um, as these pins will snap um, like a paper clip if you constantly bend them back and forth. So that's just one of the things. Um, and then same thing with this. So with, with this, um, I'm going to have my grounds back here. So I'm gonna actually going to bend these upwards like this. Because um, what I'm doing here is I'm taking this power, the ground of this section, and I am connecting it to this universal ground. All right, so you can see here I have all the grounds bent like this. And then for the reverse section, I have all the grounds bent like that. And the power has been like this. It'll, it'll be a little more, uh, It'll make more sense once I have everything kind of cleaned up. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the power, uh, but because this is sequential, um, I'm going to have these powers basically separate by itself. So this first wire is going to bend like this. I'm going to actually bend this down. And then this one, I'm just going to kind of, it's just, it's just happy to be here. So I'm just going to do that so it doesn't extend too far in either direction. Like so. Okay, so now I have everything bent, I can go ahead and start snipping. So these, these pins are obviously too long. So I, they all need to connect to each other in their respective groups. So I'm gonna cut them in a way that doesn't make them too short, um, but at the same time, I don't want them to overextend past the other LED. So for this, I'm gonna cut maybe about one third the way up. And it'd be a good idea to just kind of cut face down because these do get launched. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut all of them like this. Um, and the nicer the snips you have, typically they don't get launched. Just, just be careful what's on the receiving end of your snips, because if they do get launched, um, you know, it's, it's liable to get on the rug, get in your carpet, um, especially if you have small animals. So, you know, we try to keep this uh, mess free. 
we'll go ahead and put these here. Now everything's cut. We're gonna go ahead and bend them. Um, just keep in mind that uh, between anywhere, anywhere along these group of four, I need to put a resistor. So because it's a group of four, um, I'm just gonna put it in the middle. So I'm actually not going to bend these two middle resistors or these two middle pins. But I'm gonna go ahead and bend these so it's gonna be positive to negative like this. Um, and for your own sake and to keep it neat, um, you typically wanna just keep it as close together as possible. It does make soldering easier. Um, and it does, uh, it makes your whole thing look nicer. You wanna be proud of what you're doing. So just have it look a little nice. Um, so again, bend these down. Have them touch each other. Uh, keep these two up. Um, and then for reverse, obviously I only need to bend two of them down because the other one's going to have the resistor and you'll see why you want the resistor. Um, just like that. So nice and even, nice and touching. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and this is the part where we use the resistor. So according to your resistor values, uh, let me get these all together real quick. Um, depending on your resistor value will determine what you're going to use. Um, because I'm using groups of four uh, for yellow and groups of uh, three for white, I'm actually going to be using exclusively 470s for this one. Um, but in some cases, um, depending on how you preference it or how you want it to look, um, you may do like four groups of three instead of three groups of four. So I'll show you in another example what that would look like. Um, but again, there is no real wrong answer. Um, typically, obviously for your own sake, you want to make it as easy as possible. So it makes more sense to do four groups of three, or sorry, three groups of four instead of four groups of three. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my four sundry resistors out. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your resistor, um, take a plier or some other prying tool, right? And you're going to wrap it around that vertical resistor pin or vertical LED pin. Wrap it around a couple times. And wrap it around a couple times on the other side. And then you're gonna take your pliers and very carefully push your little coil down all the way to the bottom. Now, the reason why is if you look at an LED pin, um, I don't know if this camera will pick it up, but you're going to notice that there's like a square standoff at the bottom and that's going to stop it from making it go all the way down. Um, so you push it all the way down and then you're going to fold these over. Um, preferably in opposite directions, you just want to make sure that there's no risk of it shorting against the other LED pins that you have. So that's good. So now I'm going to do that with every single one. So this is the tedious part. This is the part where uh, you kind of want to make sure it's clean, but again, it's also just tedious. Okay, so now that I have all the resistors in, I'm gonna go ahead and solder. So this is the, the way we like to do it, where we do everything um, all at the, every step separately. So if we were doing this as a production piece, um, all the LEDs and all the resistors would be in. Um, for the sake of time, um, I'm just gonna do one section and then we'll show you what a completed one looks like. Um, so for this, we're gonna need solder. This is lead, lead tin solder. Um, we'll link you which whatever one um, is easiest to buy and what we use. And then this is a soldering iron. So this is um, an entry level soldering iron. It gets the job done. This is uh, a super cheap, like $20, $30 one off Amazon. Works great, gets the job done. Um, this is kind of just to show you what it's like um, as an entry person. We have a nicer soldering irons, but honestly, it's not really necessary for this kind of thing. Um, so we have the set here, set middle. Don't need it too hot. I'm gonna turn the soldering iron on. And one of the things you're gonna do and wanna do before you start soldering is make sure that you have a good physical connection um, 
between all your LEDs. So right here, I'm, I'm just kind of bending some LEDs back into place um, because you kind of don't want to have to hold it in place. Um, this should be a pretty quick procedure. Um, you should be able to just zap everything and it should be super satisfying. So this is good. I'm going to flip it over just so you can kind of see what's going on. And as soon as this is hot, I'm just going to start soldering. Um, so the key was soldering. And again, um, if you want to learn more about this, get more in detail, plenty of YouTube videos. We do have our own YouTube video on um, more specific wiring and whatnot. But again, hot end. So wherever the solder pulls up is going to be your hot end. It's kind of where you're going to solder. And of course, you want to heat up the thing you're soldering, not the solder. That's the other thing. Obviously with solder, um, you want to keep in a well-ventilated area. So let's just uh, buzz through this. So I'm just going to go ahead. Right, but the general idea is you want your LED pins and whatnot to be hot enough to melt the solder and not the soldering iron itself. Um, you can use the soldering iron to kind of get it started, uh, which is something that might help. But generally speaking, you want the LED pins to be able to do it themselves. Um, you also don't want to over uh, overheat the LEDs. Typically, um, the spec from our respective manufacturer is try to keep the heat exposure under six seconds. So you can see here, um, I'm well under that. I should, I'm pretty much only spending maybe two or three seconds per LED before I move on to the next one. Um, if you feel like you're overexposing it, um, you can always let go and let it uh, cool down. So that's good. We're done soldering um, this specific section. So now I'm going to go ahead and snip off these excess uh, resistor pin things that I have left over. Um, now that it's soldered together and I don't need them anymore. So that should be good. Make sure while you're doing this, you don't accidentally cut the resistor off. I've done that before. It's not fun because usually um, because of the nature of how these resistors are held on, if you end up doing that. You have to replace the resistor and usually also the LED because of the LED pins getting cut so short already. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, so far, we've not wasted any LEDs, thankfully. Um, so, okay, do a quick inspection, make sure nothing is shorting, nothing's not touching anything we don't want it to touch. But I believe that's um, this section finished. So now, um, if I actually take my power supply and turn it on, you should see that these sections turn on. So I'm gonna go grab it. my big analog power supply. I'm gonna have it set to 12 volts. You can't see it on here, but it's currently set to 12 volts. And now these are 12 volts set to medium current. And what should happen is because this is universal ground, all I have to do is hook this up to ground right here. Right, and if I put this on, the reverse should turn on. And you see all, all, uh, all 12 LEDs for the reverse turn on. Um, same thing with power. If I put power to the turn right here, all these turn on. 
So a good thing to do is kind of wire in sections and as a sanity check, you know, um, test your LEDs, um, make sure everything's working. Um, unless you have a push adjustable power supply, make sure you do it with the resistors in, otherwise you will blow out the LEDs. Um, but even if you don't have a power adjustable power supply, though we do recommend it, you can, you can use a car battery as long as you don't short it because one of the nice things with the adjustable power supply is it does have short circuit protection. So if I go like this, um, my power supply does cut power and let me know that it's shorted. Um, with the battery, obviously it's gonna spark and that's not good. But yeah, so these turn on. So what you do basically is you go ahead and now that you know this, um, you're gonna take this, extend it all the way so you have reverse um, completely done and, and they're all gonna light up at the same time. And then with the ZLEDs module, um, you're actually gonna do essentially the same thing um, with the turn signals um, where the ground is going to connect here but you're going to have this separate section for power uh, for for power and what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up with something like this um, so for lack of just I'm just going to show you um, we're going to have a central ground here right here And if I put power right here, you're going to see that all the white LEDs turn on like that. Nice and bright. And then for the uh, turn signals, you can see that this was the uh, three groups of four groups of three instead of the three groups of four. So you can kind of see how that's a little different, right? They will be functionally the same, but you can see the way we wired this is we have a central ground here. So all this is connected ground, and then it's connected to the other ground through here. And on this end, we have a, the ZLEDs module hooked up, and you're gonna see here, you have these four power wires for four unique uh, power um, that goes into our ZLEDs module, and it's labeled through uh, one through five, one through 10, um, through pins one through 10. And what's gonna happen is if I hook it up to ground and power, it will sequence like this. Um, and with the beauty of the ZLEDs module is it does adjustable speed. So if I wanted to slow it down a little bit, I can do that. So I turn the knob. Oops, I went the wrong way. Like that. It'll go slower. Um, so that's the turn signal finished. Um, we go ahead and cut to a picture of this one finished as an example. We'll also probably finish this one up and show you in a picture at a later time. Um, but that is the turn signal cover. So if you like this video, again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you liked. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, for those who are following along with us and do have this kit and have uh, very specific questions for us, um, there's two ways you can get a hold of us. Um, you can email us at sales at aluminesthetic.com. However, we do actually have a build forum uh, facebook.com forward slash Illumisthetic Builders Group. We'll, we'll leave a link in the description um, where we have all our builders, um, our network, uh, other builders, and ourselves, um, which can help ask, uh, where you can post pictures and ask more specific questions. Unfortunately, it is customers only, um, but that's a great resource. We have uh, photos. We usually leave these pre-wired photos on there as well. So if you guys have any other questions or any, wanna see us uh, do anything else, let us know. Um, but until then, uh, wait till next week and we will post the next video of the Angel Wings build. I'll see you guys in the next one.